I've loved this hobby for over 15 years, but today we're going to go over the things that I wish I would have known before I started. That means the good, the bad, and also the dumb. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Now on this channel I've tried my best to make comics as accessible to new readers as possible and I do still remember what it was like when I was first getting into this hobby. There was a lot of things that I learned along the way that I wish people would have pointed out from the beginning so today we're going to break open the cavern of comic memories that I've buried along the years and we're just going to go through them. Number 10, there is more than just Marvel and DC. And if anything, if you only look at the big two publishers when it comes to comics, you're barely going to scratch the surface. You've got Image Comics, Dark Horse, IDW, Boom, Dynamite, and also 2000 AD. And there's dozens of other publishers that I've just forgot to mention. But when I first got into comics, I only really knew about characters like Spider-Man and Batman and pretty much all the cliche ones that most people go for. But then over time, I started to experiment with different characters, different writers, and different publishers. And all of a sudden, I realized that the majority of the titles that I liked weren't even at Marvel or DC. And it might very well be the same for you. And I know if you've never read a comic before, it's better to go with something that you might have a bit of familiarity with. And that's fine, whatever comic is going to get you into this hobby is the perfect jumping on point and that's what you should pick up. But all I'm saying is don't completely close the door to anything that isn't Marvel and DC. It's the reason why I did a video that was where to start Image Comics. Because you never know, the one book that might get you really invested into comics might actually be with a different company. Number 9, it is a losing cause to try and convince everybody that you love to get into this medium. And also just because the movies and the TV shows might have a lot of love, it doesn't mean that comics is still a widely accepted hobby. Now don't get me wrong, because of the fact that I'm nearly a 30 year old man who's still watching is Power Rangers, that's a much easier target for people to go at when they want to dig at me, but the comics are still a close second. But especially when I was younger and in high school and I had no friends so I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea, I took in quite a few of the collections that I'd built up to see if somebody else would want to read them, and nobody did. But it's natural to want people to resonate with this thing that you've just discovered and you really love, but there's going to be some people that it's just a losing cause with. And that's fine, if anything, I learned that that's the reason why I really enjoyed this hobby, because it is something that I only really share with a few other people. Because if you do have have somebody in your life who does want to get into comics, they will find you. You will be known as the comic person and they will know when they want to start reading them. And you're not going to make more friends by badgering somebody who doesn't even read comics to try out the latest issue of Saga. Like yeah, it's a great series but they aren't going to appreciate it and it's not worth wasting your time. Number 8, just because something's an issue number 1 doesn't mean that it's going to be a great jumping on points. When I first got into a comic shop, pretty much the only thing that I was looking for was the newest first issue. However, what I didn't realise is that the issue number 1 that I was picking up was to Infinite Crisis. And I did not have a clue what was happening. It was clear that I missed out on so much story that went on before this that I was pretty much lost the entire time that I was reading this. Whereas in hindsight, that issue 534 of whatever series it might have been might have actually been a really good entry point. But for me, half the fun of comics is just getting stuck in, so why not pick up the most recent issue of your favourite character? In all honesty, if you're really invested in who the story is about, you will find a way to piece together the gaps. And most issues do have a previously on page at the beginning, so they will catch up quite well. And the longer that I've been reading comics, I've realised that it's just more important that I'm entertained than to realise every bit of continuity that's come before it. Number 7, this isn't a cheap hobby, but that doesn't mean that you have to spend all your money on it. Now I can't sit here and say that I've ever prioritised comics over food, but what I can say is that my fridge is currently empty, but my comic shelves aren't. And with prices rising on everything and there being so many different series and ways that you can collect stuff to begin with, you might end up thinking that this is a hobby that you can't really branch into unless you've got a lot of money. However, that's definitely not the case. It's very easy to budget things or look through bargain bins for issues that maybe haven't come out that week. You can get into collected editions which overall work out cheaper, or if you're not afraid of going digital, there's a lot of subscription services that would be perfect for you. Amazon has something called Kindle Unlimited which has quite a lot of comics on it. You've also got Marvel Unlimited and DC Universe Infinite. You can also sell off some of your previous comics that you're not going to read again so that you can buy your new ones. Or if you do have a friend that's into this hobby, maybe you could trade some of your previous issues with them so that you've got something new to read. You have also got different retailers which will always be cheaper than if you went into a bookshop. And yeah, this hobby might seem expensive on the surface, especially when you're looking at some of these omnibuses and absolute editions. But if you did want to save some money on them, I could actually help you out by recommending that you check out the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below, and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Number six, and it kind of ties into my last point, that you don't need a comic shop to be able to enjoy this hobby. Now, when I did my beginner's guide to comics a few years ago, I had a lot of people saying that because you don't have a local 
local comic shop, they don't really know where they can buy the single issues. Now, yes, I was fortunate that when I was growing up, I had a comic shop quite nearby that now, unfortunately, has just turned into another Funko Pop shop. However, now that the internet is much, much bigger, it's so much easier to enjoy this hobby. You might not have a comic shop that you can get to, but I know that some places, especially during the pandemic, were doing curbside drop-off. So that might be a service that's still available if you contact them directly, or there's also websites that will do it for you. They've also got pre-order systems, you can choose when they deliver them, so maybe you could just get one monthly shipment and save a bit of money that way. And even if that isn't an option, you can get new issues digitally. You might have to get a bit creative with it, or it might even be the case that you can only visit one every couple of months. But if you have a pull list and you show that you're legit, and you say that you can only get there every couple of months, more often than not, with a lot of the comic shops that I've been to, they will still be happy to set issues aside for you. Or more so than that, you can just go down the collected editions route. This is pretty much the reason why I've been able to get so heavily invested into this hobby, and it's also a better looking way of collecting it. Number five, and this might be the most opinionated one I'm gonna do, but follow creators more than you do characters. Now, yes, I know I said earlier on that a lot of people get into comics because they know one specific character that they really like, whereas when I followed creators, especially if I really like their writing style or their art style, I've often enjoyed those later works. So because I started with Brian Michael Bendis, I then went into his Daredevil series and Alias and Powers, and then because Ed Brubaker worked on Daredevil, I started reading Captain America and Criminal. Now, yeah, creators can also have a bad book. That's not something that's completely uncommon. But I wish I would have known that if I read a great story, it's more often than not, not because of the character, but because of the people that are creating it. Except for if that character's Daredevil, because in like the last 25 years, he hasn't really had a bad run. Number four, there will be at least one beloved classic that you just won't enjoy. So you might end up looking at top 10 and top 50 and even top 100 lists of the greatest graphic novels of all time, which is quite ironic because I recently reacted to that a few months ago. And you might be tempted to pick up some of them and it's perfectly okay if you don't love them. Now, yeah, if you go onto some of the less forgiving message boards or comment sections, you might get people saying that you're not a real fan, but those people are absolute fucking morons. And you see it happening all the time to people that might have only read a few books and then all of a sudden they don't want to continue with this. Don't let that happen to you because it's perfectly okay to have a completely different taste from someone else. At the end of the day, the opinion you should value most on a book is your own. Number three, just give everything a go. Sometimes a book that just doesn't sound like it would be your type of thing could end up being one of your favourites. When I was first getting into comics, one of the guys behind the counter recommended that I read Preacher, and I had a look at the front cover, and I just did not think that this would be my kind of thing. But he did me a great deal that he would give me the first two trade paperbacks for free, but if I enjoyed the series, then I had to buy the others from there. But it was a risk that paid off because this ended up being one of my favourite series of all time. Whereas if I would have judged the book by its cover like it's the thing that we've been taught for forever to not do, I would have missed out on this completely. But in the same way that I was saying that there's always going to be a beloved classic that you wouldn't enjoy, there might be a lesser known title that could be your favourite thing. People's tastes are completely different and yeah we don't have infinite time to be reading but I still think that it's never worth completely closing the book on a title, especially before you've even opened that book. Number two and I feel like younger me should really hear this but you're not likely to get rich from this hobby so just go into it for the enjoyment instead. You often see people getting into comics every couple of months saying which are the most valuable books? Why? Are you going to enjoy it more because it cost you more to buy in the first place? Sure, yeah, you could make some money from a book that does eventually increase in price, but that's not guaranteed. I would much rather have a book that I enjoy and I know I can go back and read years from now than one that's going to be slightly more expensive than what I paid for it. And it always just feels a little bit disingenuous and you can tell from a mile away the people that don't actually enjoy this hobby and are just trying to make a bit of money from it. So you don't want to be that person, especially because we have such limited time to actually enjoy the things that we want to do in life, that I think comics should be the thing that you only really get into because you like reading those stories. Any kind of money that you might make after that is just an extra bonus, but it shouldn't be the sole factor going into this. And number one, you are not going to read every comic that's ever existed. And that's okay. There's not some entry level exam that you have to do, so I don't know why people put so much pressure on themselves. Especially during the pandemic, you'd see people saying, hey, I just got into this hobby two months ago and I've already spent two grand on it. This isn't your mortgage. You don't need some kind of down payment to get approval from everyone else. Just read the books that you like and find your way to enjoy this hobby. If you get into this reading the free digital issues that they put on Marvel, then fine, that's great. If you start with independent comics, that's great too. If you want the classics, hats off to you. If you want to start at Spider Spider-Man issue one then go ahead. And there are great people in this community that aren't going to have those expectations and do just want more people to get invested in comics. Because this is a great hobby that I've enjoyed for many years and hopefully many more to come and I'd hate to think that there might be somebody that gets talked out of it because of other people. And that was kind of my intention with this video, hopefully that's come across but I'm just going to leave this here. So until next time just make sure that you stay safe 
and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof. See you at the next video.